slipping through my fingers. Her name was Eloise Winthers, and she was the most beautiful human I had ever seen. And she was kind. So kind. But most of all, she was the only person I'll ever love. The day she died, I started living. When I first met her, I was going through the motions. My job as a nurse was tiring, and I dreaded every night having to wake up and go there. That changed when she came into the IR that afternoon, because Eloise was the reason my soul started to smile again. It wasn't a busy day like most days were, so when I called out her name at my desk, I took my time. I didn't bother to look up from the PC when I asked her to explain her emergency. When she spoke, she sounded like a thousand symphonies, and I just had to see the face that made this angelic sound. Her light blonde hair was shimmering in the sunlight, like a golden thread in a fairy tale. Her heavenly blue eyes met mine, and she said, I think I broke my left arm. Blood flushed to my head and made my face red. I just nodded and took notes. I was speechless, but mustered up the courage to assure her that the doctor would be there shortly. That evening before I went home, I snuck into her files, found her contact information, and started to come up with an excuse for using them. I went in my car, but let my mind do the driving, and suddenly I was at the Earth Angel's house. I wanted to knock on her door so bad, but I couldn't. Instead, I just sat in my car outside her house. I sat there until the sun came up, and then I sat there some more. I sat there for so long I didn't get to work. I must have been dozing off because I was jolted awake by the sound of a door slamming. Her front door. I looked at my watch and it was way past midnight. I had seven missed calls from work, but I turned off my phone. Eloise walked past my seemingly unnoticeable car and went down the road. I got out and followed her. I don't know why, I just couldn't help it. It was as if I wasn't in control of my body. She, well we, walked for about 10 minutes when we came to an abandoned factory building that had a large entry with hinges and locks on it. Even though it was pitch black out and no one except me was around. She didn't seem at all scared. She walked around the building, and while I hid in a bush, I heard knocking and a screech as the door she knocked on opened. She went inside and I followed shortly after. My mind was racing, and my heart felt like it was going to jump out of my chest. Why is this beautiful creature here all alone? I thought to myself, and went inside. I shouldn't have followed. I shouldn't have lurked. I should have been at home in my bed after a day's work. But I loved her the moment words came out of her mouth formed by her rose-red lips. So I had to follow. I had to lurk because I had to have her and hold her for all eternity. The old factory building smelled like urine and worse and I almost gagged. Eloise went down a dark corridor and entered a large room. As I hid behind a pillar, I observed people in the back of the room. Candles were illuminating their spot, and I saw they had mattresses, blankets, a hot plate, and stuff like that. They seemed to be a family. Two kids, both girls, at about six, eight years old, and a woman and a man. I hadn't noticed until now the shoulder bag Eloise was wearing. She took a brown paper bag out of it and handed it to the couple. I heard them thank her profusely and saw them hug her. My stomach turned and I felt sorta jealous. I was still hiding when the love of my life went back out into the night. Before I followed, I saw the family take some cans and stuff out of the paper bag. Eloise, that amazing being, had brought them food. I told you she was kind. I followed her home and was just about to go back to my car when Eloise went inside her house without locking her door. I know this because after she closed it, I had my ear pinned up to it in hopes of hearing her voice again. I just stood there, again speechless, and at last I went ever so gently inside 
not making even the slightest sound. I heard the water running. She was in the shower. Can you imagine the feelings I felt knowing that my soulmate was naked and wet with hot steaming water? I knew I should have gone home. I knew I shouldn't have peeked, but I just couldn't help myself. I had to see her the way God created her. I had to touch her naked and without a doubt, soft skin. So I went into her bathroom, quietly. I wanted to pull the shower curtain aside, but I couldn't. Instead, I found her bedroom, and I climbed into her bed, and waited, and waited, and then I waited some more. Daylight arrived, and she still wasn't next to me. The water was still running. I had to check on her. I couldn't have something happen to her. Not before I could get my hands on her. On the bathroom floor lay my beautiful Eloise's blood, running slowly out of her head, like melting butter on a piece of toast. She wasn't breathing. I was going to call an ambulance anonymously, but I still felt like I would have a problem explaining why I was in her home since I was a mere stranger. So I turned on my phone again and her laptop, which didn't have a password. It must have been fate found her Facebook, and sent her a friend request from my phone. I accepted it from her computer, and then I wrote some messages between us on Messenger. I made them sound romantic, like we had that relationship we were meant to. But I got way into it, and time flew by. I didn't bother eating or drinking, or even going to the toilet, and then I realized that it had been two whole days. I didn't care, though. I kept on writing messages between us, building up our love and life and intern jokes, and I didn't stop until I felt the cold steel from the handcuffs the police put around my wrists. I screamed and cried, but they were brutal and didn't care. They eventually found that the cause of death was a slip and fall. Eloise had hit her head and died. Her surveillance cameras showed me lying in her bed the moment she fell and died. They didn't let me go because they said I had been defiling her corpse. That couldn't be further from the truth. I made love to my Eloise, and that is not disgusting. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. Also, I got charged with breaking in, stalking, and waiting too long to contact law enforcement. They said I couldn't go to prison. They said I was dangerous. Nonsense but now I'm here in the asylum. They give me pills three times a day. I hide them under my tongue, like I hid under Eloise's blankets, and spit them out when the nurse leaves. They say I won't get out for a very long time, but I know where her body is buried, and when I get out, I will make love to my sweet angel again. Until then, I can make plenty of do with her pinky finger, that they did see me cut off her but didn't see me swallow. 